talking during the show. And now, the tango. Thank you, see you this week. president in 2012. Mm. Speaker Gingrich, what do you say to skeptics who bring up the age issue? At 67, you are the oldest candidate in the field. You know, Rome wasn't built overnight, neither are political careers. Experience <laughs> takes time, so do my speeches. Next question. Uh, Mr. Gingrich, you announced your candidacy over Twitter. What was it like using social networking for the first time? You know, it was actually the first time I had ever used a computer. <laughs> Once I found the on switch, it took me about an hour to post on Twitter. After that, I spent a couple other hours surfing the web. I also used up the rest of my St. Ives hand lotion, if you catch my drift. <laughs> That's disgusting. Next question. How do you respond to critics who say you don't have the right values for a presidential candidate? Mm -hmm. They cite your, your divorce while your wife was on her deathbed, as well as many affairs. Oh, at least I say it. At least I'm not black. Next question. <laughs> you converted to Catholicism in 2009. Why? The wine. Next question. Uh, what happened you, to your predominant southern accent? Again, the wine. Next question. <laughs> Do you think you're going to win? Do I think I'm going to win? Luke <laughs> Gingrich! Ron Gingrich! What a week it was. Yes, presidential candidate Newt Gingrich has announced that he will offer a new contract with America. Considering Gingrich's history, let's hope it's a prenup. <laughs> Voters without a college degree who make less than $24,000 a year are most likely to support Sarah Palin for president in 2012, according to a new Gallup poll. The poll also stipulated, as long as NASCAR or Jesus aren't also running. <laughs> Details gleaned from Osama bin Laden's personal handwritten journal were made public this week. Notably, it included only one entry from five years ago promising that he would write in it every day. <laughs> the Taliban began tweeting in English this week, which is more than we can say for the majority of American teens. The Taliban claims it has avenged bin Laden's death by bombing various targets in Pakistan. In related news, I have avenged my girlfriend dumping me two years ago by stealing Hot Pockets from Albertsons. <laughs> in other relationship news, we take you now to your television screen. time to meet our bachelorette. She's an award-winning journalist, a member of the Kennedy family, and former First Lady of California. Say hello to Maria Schreiber! <laughs> I'd want to be a mushroom because I'm a real fun guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, bachelor number two, same question. Yo, I'd be a romantic bush. Classic, romantic, hot, and horny. <laughs> and uh, bachelor number three. I would be an Austrian oak, and I would snap your pencil necks. <laughs> Arnold, is that 
you? No! No, it is somebody that is different! Right. You're, not, you're not allowed to ask the bachelors their names. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> fashion number one. Do you see the glass is half full or half empty? Uh, <laughs> what difference does it make? <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor number two. Yo, I see it as half naked. How dare you talk to my ah! Arnold! I knew it was you. No, it must be my doppelganger. <laughs> like when that movie Total Recall, when I played David Quaid, and then this evil double Hauser. Arnold, you're not fooling anyone. All right, let's just get back to the game. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Bachelor number one, what would you like to do on our first date? Uh, I would love to <laughs> stay at home alone by myself. All right, um, bachelor number two then. You know, I, I will kill your family. <laughs> Arnold, I can hear you. What? No, that wasn't me. That was bachelor number two. He threatened to kill my family like in that awesome movie, True Lies. Yo, yo, maybe she'd think you wouldn't, wouldn't be Schwarzenegger if you didn't con stop constantly reference your own films. I will strangle you with razor wire like I did to Mr. Freeze and the Running ah! Man! Come here. <laughs> Arnold, this is why we didn't work out. Because you're so stubborn and you always constantly bring up your stupid movies. Stupid movies? I want two Oscars! All right, you say Oscars, the rest of the world says Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> what difference does it make? How did you reason yourself in here? It was easy. I went up to bachelor number three and I gave him a bomb. But it was like, wrapped like a present. Right, right, jingle all the way, one of those bad movies. Look, honey, I love you. But it's not gonna work out between us, okay? So just let it go. Wait, wait. You were on the other side of the barrier. What's it like? <laughs> you know, I've never done this before. I don't have the tongue to do it. No one will be able to judge a man who is good or who is bad. And all you can judge is that two stood up against many. And that's the important thing. Arnold, I've never seen this side of you before. It's so beautiful. It's in Conan the Barbarian! <laughs> I'm done. Hasta la vista! Videos confiscated during the raid on Bin Laden's compound show the terrorist leader sitting on his floor channel surfing for news footage of himself. <laughs> Further research has shed some light on his existence in Abbottabad. I press page down and in guide and all I see is real world Las Vegas. Okay. This thing is useless. Have you tried the menu button? Yes, Akbar, I have tried the menu button. Do you see? <laughs> Geico Insurance. So easy a caveman can do Stupid it. Stupid commercial. <laughs> Progressive is much better. Shut up. Thanks for calling Time Warner about My name is Tina. How may I help you? You should hear this girl's accent. She can barely speak Arabic. Is it so hard to get someone who answers phones who lives in this country? Tell me about it. Yes, I'm having problems with uh, my cable television. Your name, please? Uh, Osama bin uh, Smith. <laughs> okay, Mr. Smith, I see you've been a customer for six years at 19 different addresses. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds about right, yes. <laughs> and for security reasons, can you tell me your wife's first name? Uh, Masala, Tarina, Serena, Hupa, Huma, uh, and Stacy. And Stacy. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Now, what seems to be the problem? I'm ready to shoot this fucking cable box. I understand, Mr. Smith. That's a common problem. Let me see. Do <laughs> you have a technician out there tomorrow, either between the hours of 8 to noon or noon to 4? No, no, no. Noon to 4. We have the barbed wire installation in the morning. Noon to 4. <laughs> Excellent, Mr. Smith. Do you have any dogs, landmines, or 16-foot unbreachable walls that our technician should be aware of? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Smith. We look forward to serving you. Thank you. Wow, it is tomorrow morning already. <laughs> ah, Tom Warner. You were supposed to be here hours ago. 
And to my bad, I got directions from the Pakistani intelligence. <laughs> ah! Geronimo, E-K-I-A! Repeat, Geronimo, E-K-I-A! Move to the upper levels, go, 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 go! Would you be interested in any of our premium channels? <laughs> As we all know, the Lakers were swept by the Mavericks four games to none. We take you now to the Lakers locker room shortly after their loss. <laughs> For the purposes of dramatization, the tall, predominantly African-American players will be played by short white actors. <laughs> and this one is a girl. That is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened in my life. And I was on trial for rape. <laughs> Powell must face, Powell must face family now. <laughs> man, Pal, I know what you're feeling, man. I mean, I've actually married into mediocrity where it's celebrated. I might as well change my last name to Lamar Kardashian. <laughs> I don't think we should go out like this. I think we need to explain to our fans and the American people the real reason we lost the series. No, no, no. You can't do that. No. What was that that I heard, Ron? Uh, uh, no, nothing. She, she, she didn't say nothing. Oh, I said something. I think we need to explain to the public the real reason we lost the series so they don't think we're a bunch of entitled millionaires phoning it in. Well, you know, no one can know what we do. Mm -hmm. Pow just wants to go home and sleep for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> How I feel you, man. I mean, How is still on Afghan time? <laughs> the jet lag is killing me right now. Killing Just me. Don't think I can keep this inside any longer. We have to keep it to ourselves. Look, I know how you feel, but nobody can know that even though we are the Los Angeles Lakers, we are also the precision killing team known only as Team Six! <laughs> that feels really good to say that out loud. Yeah. No, I know you guys want to go out there and be like, listen, don't look at us as the guys that got swept by the Mavericks, <laughs> all right? Look at us as the guys that went out there and brought down the most dangerous man in the world, Osama Bin Laden. But we can't, all right? Remember what I told you that first practice. Yes, sir. Defend the U.S. Constitution and protect the sovereign rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And defend the perimeter inside the paint against the big men. <laughs> and especially keep, keep our double lives a secret from everyone, everyone including our families. <laughs> especially Chloe, my God. Because you know she just blab it all over VH1. And one, one thing about those Kardashian girls, if it didn't happen on TV, it just didn't happen. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, well, you fellas get some rest. Yes, yes coach. coach. We'll get ready for Libya. Go! Oh. This Justin Bin Laden's personal journal details his secret crush on Robert Pattinson. <laughs> Mitt Romney clarified the difference between his Massachusetts health care program, where citizens are required to purchase insurance, and the recently passed federal health care program, where citizens are required to purchase health insurance. He explained one is his idea and one isn't. <laughs> China has introduced new nuclear safety standards in the wake of the Japanese nuclear disaster. So far, the reviews have been glowing. In entertainment news, Paul Thomas Anderson announced that he's directing an untitled Scientology movie. The film is expected to be a cult classic. <laughs> Bristol Palin and her son Trip are getting their own reality show. Sarah Palin told Bristol to ignore the haters like Pakistan ignores a giant compound next to their second division Northern Army headquarters. <laughs> we take you now to a town actually named Waterproof, Louisiana. <laughs> Before the mighty Mississippi River sweeps away the lovely town of Waterproof, Louisiana, I just want to say it is an honor and a privilege. Thank you all for electing me as your mayor. Amen! Amen. I love me waterproof. <laughs> Now, does everybody have family and friends they can stay with? No! 
Well, <laughs> well, Mr. Rabbit, I'm absolutely sure one of the good folk of water, uh, waterproof you could go along with. Yeah. No way! I'm not leaving here! No way! No way! <laughs> well... Well, if that uh, water's gonna wash in here and it'll kill us all! No way! I'm tired of Mama Nature having her way with us! Alright! For generations, our family had to leave while the river came in and we had to come back and rebuild! I say we stay here and fight! <laughs> you mean fight the Mississippi River? That's exactly what I mean! Well now how are we supposed to do that? We have tried building levees, yep. we have tried yep. building dams, there's yeah. just not enough building material. We are no match for the Sippy. That's what the Mississippi <laughs> wants you to think! Yeah, now I'm tired of that northern water thinking that it can come down here and push our southern boat around. Alright, I know we say it a lot, alright? But I think it's time that the south will rise again! Water has caused the evacuation of thousands of people. Thousands of people. Their losses of their homes. And farmlands. From Missouri. To Louisiana. To. We here at Chevy. <laughs> Chevy. Are doing our part. To provide relief from this disaster. We're driving our Chevys. Chevys. <laughs> to the levees. Those are dams. <laughs> In the hopes that they're dry. <laughs> Damn. So buy a Chevy. Buy a Chevy. Chevy. They're like Japanese cars, only they don't sell as well. Buy a Chevy and join us. And repeat occasional words for dramatic emphasis. Repeat. repeat. And drive the floodwaters back. <laughs> This week, Orthodox Jewish newspaper Der Zeitung became a source of controversy when the Brooklyn-based periodical published a photo of President Obama and his staff watching the Abbottabad raid, but removed Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and counterterrorism director Audrey Thomason from the photo. In Mrs. Clinton's place, the newspaper put Topol from Fiddler on the Roof. 
<laughs> but here now, live via satellite, is Secretary of State Clinton. Thank you for joining us, Mrs. Clinton. Good to be here, George. Madam Secretary, <laughs> what was your initial reaction when you learned that your Zeitung had edited you out of this now iconic photo? Frankly, George, it didn't surprise me at all. You know, uh, it just reminds me that sexism is still alive and well in this country. What about the argument that the periodical was merely being sensitive to its readers' religious views? I don't think it was, uh, it, I think it uh, edited uh, us out of there just because it doesn't want women to be seen as a critical element in the, um, the assassination of one of the greatest villains of our time. So you, so you have no sympathy for uh, Der Zeitung's concern that the unedited photo may have been seen as sexually suggestive? No, absolutely. <laughs> sexually suggestive? <laughs> Yes, Der, Der Zeitung stated that it has a strict policy of never printing photos of women that could be interpreted as sexually suggestive. That's why they cut me out? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what they said. Wow, um, what else did they say? Oh, <laughs> um, they apologized. They did? Yeah. Wow, did they sound sincere? I, I don't know. Does it make a difference? Well, George, no. I, it, it's, it's, you know, it's still not okay that they edited me out of that photo, but, uh, you know, I just haven't been called sexually suggestive in, well, ever. <laughs> Come on. Madam Secretary, you're, you're suggestive. <laughs> George, you don't have to humor me. No, I know you're totally, I mean it. If I were Der Zeitung, I would totally have photoshopped you out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sweet. <laughs> no, I, I totally mean it. Look, just take a look at the photo in question. That it oatmeal colored Shiro jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your 60 year old bosom hand playfully obscuring your lips. <laughs> Come on, George, I'm married. Yeah, that's, that didn't never seem to make a difference to him. <laughs> what? Yeah. Which, I'm just, I mean, you, you were the first lady of the United States. I mean, that fact alone makes you every man's fantasy. You're right, George. I'm like Eleanor Roosevelt or Mary Todd Lincoln. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, George, if there's Zaytun wants to Photoshop me out of a picture, just to prevent their readers from being suddenly overcome with the urge to pleasure themselves, well then, why should I stand in the way? See, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Although, it is criminal what they did to uh, Audrey Thomason, that's for sure. I understand. Come on, George, come on, let's be honest. I mean, they didn't edit her out for just because of her looks. I mean, did you catch her fugly nose? Good bitch! <laughs> Hillary Clinton, everybody! <laughs> Critics are charging that Obama's immigration push is a ploy to garner the 2012 Latino vote. Not true, the president asserted, at the entrance of a Home Depot parking lot. <laughs> a man in a Canary Island supermarket decapitated a woman with a knife. In the man's defense, she had more than 12 items in the express lane. Aaron Schock, a 29-year-old Republican congressman, is under heavy criticism for showing off his bare chest and six-pack abs on the cover of Men's Health magazine. In a rare show of bipartisan support, Democrat Barney Frank and former Republican Senator Larry Craig have endorsed the photo shoot. <laughs> We're getting more details now on the raid of Bin Laden's compound, including the fact that he was a consumer of pornography. His favorite site was Burka Babes Gone Wild. Now a message from our sponsor, ITT Tech. Have you been out of work for too long? Worried that you're never going to find a good paying job again? Well, there's one profession that's always hiring. That's right, the oldest profession in the world, prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> we here at ITT Tech have a six-week prostitution course that will prepare you for the profitable industry of prostitution. Please call and sign up today. Now you can hear, hear what some of our graduates are saying about ITT Tech prostitution course. <laughs> Finding a good paying job with mommy hours has always been a challenge. <laughs> but thanks to ITT Tech, 
I'm able to be my own boss, fuck a lot of guys while my husband's at the office, and get the last John out of the house before the kids are off the bus. <laughs> Thanks, ITT Tech. <laughs> I've always been curious about having sex with a guy. <laughs> Thanks to ITT Tech's certificate of prostitution, I can go gay for the for the pay and still claim I'm straight. <laughs> Thank you, ITT Tech. My social security benefits weren't enough to live on, but thanks to ITT Tech, they showed me how to market myself to men who like freaky old women who have one good hip in bed. Sometimes I even get paid for them to pee on me. <laughs> Thank you, ITT Tech! Well, today, to learn more about our program, we offer small class sizes, financial aid, and career guidance counseling so you can get back to work as soon as possible. You can make a great living fucking as many guys as possible in the night. <laughs> Call and sign up today. Try a new challenge today. Call ITT Tech. Thanks, ITT Tech. Pretty quiet tonight. Third night in a row. It's like nobody wants to leave Mexico illegally anymore. <laughs> we gotta catch some illegals or uh, we're gonna lose our jobs to the government cuts. Well, we can't make them cross the border. And even if we could, it's not like we'd catch him before he would. Uh, he's like a ghost. He just swoops in out of nowhere and catches him if they're trying to break into the U.S. The locals talk about him in hushed tones, like the legend of the chupacabras. He is legendary. Well, whatever he is, if he doesn't cut this out, we're gonna lose our jobs. Wait, I think I hear someone coming. Maybe we can finally catch an illegal. Oh. All right, now, I don't want any more trouble out of the two of you. You understand me? See. Si. Si. Uh, See si what? See, si, si, senor presidente. presidente. Very good. <laughs> Talk to him more, fellas. You're gonna have to step up your game if you want to keep those jobs. <laughs> Mr. President, I don't understand how you can do it. How can you run our country and keep illegal immigrants from entering? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You see, by day, I'm mild-mannered President Obama. But at night, I become... Barack Obama! Border Patrol! <laughs> you see, I made a promise to the people of the United States that I would keep this border secure. And if that means I gotta come down here and do it myself, by God, that is what I will do. That's quite a, com a commitment, Mr. President. Yeah, you don't see John Boehner down here rounding up illegals and sending them back to Mexico. Well, no, that's a thing. See, I, I round them up, but I'm not exactly sending them back to Mexico. See, uh, studies show that uh, as many times as we catch these guys, they're gonna try and come back across in the future. And eventually, they'll make it through. That's right. And see, they strain our economy by using programs that are paid for by American taxpayers and taking those taxpayers' jobs. Thanks for the summary, Mr. President. <laughs> well, but don't worry, I've got real solutions, because I'm Barack Obama, Border Patrol. <laughs> See, I take them here, where they meet first with a U.S. Circuit Court judge. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I hereby renounce and remove all allegiance. The judge administers the oath of allegiance to the United States, making them United States citizens. Congratulations, you are now citizens of the United States. Hi, Dios. Now that they're U.S. citizens, I have an IRS agent come and issue them social security numbers. At which point, he explains to them how to pay taxes to the American government. Two eight seven three, and we need thirty percent of your earnings for the government. See? <laughs> now, after a, a copious amount of paperwork, they are allowed to go free into their new homeland. It's as simple as that. Now we've got less illegals crossing the border into our country, straining that economy. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I, I'd like to think so myself. Remember, if anybody asks, you were sitting here by. Barack Obama! Uh, border Patrol. <laughs> Secret Agent Man! Secret Agent Man! Have you given you a number? Have you taken away your name? It's so nice to finally meet you, Mr. and Mrs. 
Mrs. Johnson. Yes, we've uh, been looking forward to meeting you too because, um, well, we have some things we want to get off our chest. Okay. Well, Timmy is the most delightful boy. He is excellent in my class. No, stop me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Man. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of this. <laughs> Where the hell do you get off talking to us that way? <laughs> All I said was nice things about Timmy. Yeah, okay, well, those nice things are a cultural punch in the gut to my wife and I. You see, Ms. Smiley, my husband and I are jerk-offs. Complete jerk-offs. <laughs> it's our cultural uh, deal that we uh, don't regard any human being with their thoughts or their actions or feelings. I don't know what we're talking about right now, because I'm not paying attention. <laughs> well, what does this have to do with Timmy's progress in school? Listen, I made a fortune running a successful pyramid scheme, and I'm using that money to run for local senate as the Tea Party candidate. Yes, and in 1998, I was Miss America. I was vapid and shallow, and I didn't have an original thought in my mind. But now I have a, an incredible sense of entitlement. She's like <laughs> Sarah Palin and Michelle Bachman combined. <laughs> so? So, if Timmy grows up to be educated and intelligent, he, he's just going to be another loser like the other good people in the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be a... You, it, you've got to, to survive in this world, you've got to be a real jerk-off. Oh, Complete jerk-off. I completely disagree. There are so many incredible individuals in this world that have found true greatness without having to compromise themselves. <laughs> Name one. President Barack Obama. Did you not hear the speech on immigration? He was compromising all over the place. Oh, uh, okay. Um, surely you, uh, you can't have anything against the ethics of Anderson Cooper. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be a successful broadcaster, he's a closeted gay. Oh, oh uh, Billy Graham? Okay, if Billy Graham is so successful, why didn't he just heal himself? Oh my god, I think you're right. <laughs> Good people cannot get anywhere in, in today's world. I'm glad you're finally, finally seeing our side of the street. I was about to slap you in the next week. So, uh, what are you going to do about this problem? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, well, I guess no more homework for Billy. Okay, okay. that's a good start. Okay. Uh, uh, his first assignment could be to watch more on TV. Oh, as long as it's Jersey Shore. Yeah. Oh, sure, <laughs> Jersey Shore. Talk about real jerk-offs. Yeah. Oh, I could give him a pop quiz every week. I don't think that's true. Hey, really yeah. I don't know what well, he sees on Adult Swim. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, okay. That's good. Okay. That's good. <laughs> At the rate you're going, you're going to be one hell of a jerk off. Complete <laughs> jerk off. You know, I think with just the right amount of pressure, we can make sure that Timmy is a solid C student and a horrible individual. Okay. And maybe, just maybe, we'll see him take the oath to the President of the United States of America. She paints a beautiful picture. What are we talking about again? <laughs> In sports news, Yankee pitcher Bartolo Colon attributes an injection of stem cells into his injured elbow as the reason for his successful return to baseball. Colon states, I've lost weight, my fastball is back at 95 miles per hour, and the extra fingers I've grown also help. <laughs> LeBron James apologized to the city of Cleveland for his highly publicized exit last summer. That's like running into your ex-girlfriend who broke up with you two years ago in front of all your friends for some rich guy for no good reason, and then she says, oh, I'm sorry we ended things the way we did. I hope everything's going well for you. <laughs> The city of Chicago has named a road in honor of Oprah Winfrey. The street is narrow, then wide, then narrow again, then wide, <laughs> and even wider. It also goes both ways. Actress Marge Helgenberger told a French magazine that Justin Bieber was sort of a brat when he co-starred on CSI next year, last year. She was immediately torn to shreds and devoured by a pack of nine-year-old girls. <laughs> a recent study suggests that patients covered by Medicaid are almost twice as likely to be offered a colonoscopy exam as those not covered. This study confirms something most Americans have known for years. Having Medicaid can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> 
there you go, Mr. Carlstrom. It was just a cavity. Oh, thank God for Medicaid, that's all I can say. Well, hey, while we have the suction, suction tube out, why don't we just give you a colonoscopy? Okay, you got some. <laughs> participating in the LAPD gun buyback program. Well, thanks for making it anonymous. I mean, phew. <laughs> we have a Borders gift card, uh. um, a Bed Bath & Beyond gift card. Oh, uh, you don't have a Vendum liquor gift card, I think? <laughs> I'm afraid not. We have a Big Five sporting goods oh, gift card. Oh, that'll do. OK. Oh, it's amazing how it's, I'm already at Big Five. <laughs> Can I help you? I'd like a hunting rifle, please. <laughs> Steady at the helm, sailor. Aye, aye, captain. Leave us, sailor. I'll handle it. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe my ears. Believe them. I signed the memorandum two minutes ago. Damn it! If I didn't stop to dance, I could have stopped you. <laughs> but I'm a sucker for Duran Duran. <laughs> you may hate me, Rodrigo, but I had to do it. Same-sex marriages can't be on able basis. People aren't comfortable with them. Screw with what people are comfortable with. You can't discriminate against a whole group of people. I know you know that. At least you believe that. Last night. <laughs> Rodrigo, last night was different. Men have their weaknesses. Mine is singing semen tunes while making greasy love to you. <laughs> what shall we do with the drunk? Stop! Sailor? <laughs> what shall we do with the drunk? Sailor? Stop! It feels too good! <laughs> Rodrigo. We have to separate business from pleasure. It's what America does best. It's what America does worse! You can't say one thing and then do another. Don't ask, don't tell is banned. And you have orders to follow. I don't follow orders. That's not what you said. <laughs> last night, like I said, last night was different. Oh, Danny boy, <laughs> the pipes, the pipes are gone. Stop it! It's not even a sailor song. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters is that we love each other, and you can't deny that. I can't deny that. I can close my eyes and pretend like it hasn't happened, like the Navy is doing with same-sex marriages. We close our eyes and pretend that things aren't changing, then we can be happy. I can be happy. Well, then you can be happy without me. We go, no! <laughs> Looks like I'll just have to find another man on this ship. What does that mean? Everyone in the Navy is gay, dumbass! <laughs> <laughs> Rodrigo, what am I going to do without you? The question is, what's the Navy going to do without me and all the other hardworking gay Americans that risk their life for this country? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you <laughs> away. You know a river. Oh, Shenandoah, I love to sing. Away. Let the song finish, and then we will finish inside of each other. <laughs> Who do the Bin Ladens think they are? Every dinner party has to be at their house. Every charity ball has to be in their yard. And what's with him, like, watching himself on TV? I don't know. I, I, I heard they used to live in a cave. 
Oh, look who's here. I'm so glad you made oh, it. So mwah, mwah, mwah. I'm so glad we're having another party at your house. Oh, come inside. Come inside. My husband's on TV. <laughs> when we moved to Abbottabad, uh, we didn't really know anybody. And the neighbors were really like this tight-knit crew, you know? And so it was really hard getting in and getting noticed. But, you know, I, I jumped a little, few hurdles and uh, I think I did pretty well. We're like a family now, you know? Thick as thieves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look who's here! Oh, how are you? Look at you, you look fabulous. <laughs> oh my goodness, you look gorgeous in those shoes, Brazella. <laughs> Buy one, get one, go. <laughs> These women are so competitive. Ariba is the worst. If she sees a mall bin Laden with a juicy couture sweatsuit under her burka, then she's gotta go out and get one too. She's always playing, keeping up with the bin Ladens. I don't care what I wear in my burka. I do not feel the need to compete. <laughs> you girls haven't been here in forever. Oh, we put another foot on the balcony. We dug up a new guest bathroom in the yard. Come on, come on, you gotta see. Everything is always a competition with the Bin Ladens. That Emil is always bragging. She's all like, my son's car bomb was superior because he used the galvanized steel nails. And how many infidels has your husband killed? Everybody knows my husband would make the better mark. I heard that. <laughs> oh. I don't know what you think you heard, but uh, why don't you share with us more stories of the new barbed wire you're putting up? Oh, oh. yeah, I was so impressed. Oh, well, I see. I see y'all's talking behind my back, bitches. Oh. So this is how it's going to go oh. down, huh? You want to get all jihad style? Hey. usually, but I just don't have a lot of time for this petty shit, you know, about who's who or who's doing what. Microsoft is set to buy Skype for $8.5 billion, making it the most expensive deal in the company's history. At least that's what Skype thought they heard through their choppy, garbled connection. <laughs> Paris Hilton has put her house on the market. If you can believe it, she just now realized she can live in a hotel for free. Ashton Kutcher will replace Charlie Sheen on Two and a Half Men, meaning that this fall uh, he'll be two and a half months away from unemployment. <laughs> Many people, including the writer of the following sketch, feel that the news media of today remove all rationality and intelligence from our political discourse, replacing it with fiery emotion and a tween-like obsession with celebrity gossip. Which makes me wonder, what will the news of the future be like? And now, news of the future! Good evening. I'm beautiful and racially ambiguous to boost ratings. <laughs> Our top story, Lindsay Lohan, is a dirty douchebag. <laughs> More on that later. Now we go to Skip in the bitch slap room. Skip? <laughs> Thanks, idiot. Hi, I'm standing here with some asshole senator whose opinions are different than mine. Who's right, senator? Me or you? I am, Skip. You're an asshole, senator. <laughs> Fuck you, Skip. And now back to you, anchor I'm trying to have sex with. Thanks, <laughs> Skip. Not a chance in hell. This just in that senator is a registered sex offender. That's not true at all! <laughs>
like to say that I am not a sexual predator, but uh, admits pressure from my party, and in order to protect my family, I am going to issue a public apology and resign. Thank you. This just in, this news program just created news, so good for us. <laughs> now we're going to a segment called Word on the Street, where we give just any random idiot a forum to express their opinion. So what's the word on the street today? Ah! Muslims! They drive me so crazy! Ah! issues relating to commitment. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't know how marriage can work, you know? Like, <laughs> my parents' marriage was awful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, because I told him I'm not really into commitment as much as him burning my nipples. <laughs> Bill, are you hearing what Gina is telling you? I am. I hear your thoughts, Gina, and I'm okay with you burning your nipples. What the fuck? <laughs> Last week we were also talking about Mike and how he likes to keep prisoners in his attic. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sex. <laughs> and Tanya? Well, I was just hoping that he would respect my need to blindfold the sex prisoners so they can't identify us. God damn it! God damn it! Tanya! Fuck, we go over this all the time. I cannot orgasm anonymously, okay? I need eye contact. I need to know they're looking in my eyes. <laughs> Have you two considered compromise? Huh? What if you blindfolded one half of the prisoners and left the other half unblindfolded? Oh. Perhaps you could build a second sex dungeon, maybe in the basement. It could be a cooperation oh, project. Cooperation project. <laughs> a cooperation <laughs> project <laughs> is where a couple works on something together toward a common goal. It's especially helpful if somebody's feeling underappreciated. That's not really fantastic. <laughs> we're, not, we're not building a sex dungeon. <laughs> oh, Eric, it doesn't have to be a sex dungeon. It can be anything you'd like. But it'd be a lot better if it was a sex dungeon. <laughs> Annie, why don't you suggest something you'd like to work on with Eric as a cooperation project? Okay, well, um, well, we have all these really cute cardinals in our backyard, and mm. I was mm. hoping maybe to make a bird feeder. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, I want you just to respond openly and honestly. Yeah, of course I'll build a bird feeder with you. <laughs> <laughs> That is so fabulous. Why don't we check in with Bill and Gina and find out what they built as their cooperation project last week? Well, <laughs> we dug a grave together in our backyard. Nice. Yeah. See, I want to put a mailman in it. Good choice. But old stubborn Gina over here wants to put a complete stranger. <laughs> well, maybe it's time for you two to give each other your safety message. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Gina, I hear you. And your secret is safe with me. I'm fine with you wanting to put a complete stranger in our grave. Bill, I hear you, and I'm fine with putting the mailman in the grave. That was wonderful. <laughs> now, Eric and Annie, as you can see, we use safety messages to allow for neutral, peaceful discourse so that we can resolve any tensions. Would you like to try? No, we're not going to use a process that is perverted and possibly criminal. Oh. 
Mm. Well, maybe you don't trust the process, but do you trust Annie? Yeah, honey. I mean, don't you trust me? Don't I, you trust Annie? I trust Annie? Okay. Come on. Safety message. <laughs> honey, I understand and I respect your need to, to hold off having children until we feel more financially, you know, stable. Mm. And I uh, trust your opinion and... I'm all right with having a thousand tiny pillows on the bed. Oh. Oh. Wow. That is really, really great. Mike and Tanya, do you want to share your safety messages? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Tanya, sweetheart, your opinion mm -hmm. is safe with me, mm -hmm. and it's also safe to want to pour burning hot grease on my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, your opinion is safe with me, and it's okay if you want to surgically implant an extra arm between my breasts. I love it. <laughs> no. It's okay. I think, I think we might be ready for our wish treaty. <laughs> now, a, a wish treaty, the way this works is you're going to count to three, and at the same time, you're going to say what a secret desire is of yours. Now, what this is meant to prove is that you're both willing to fulfill the other's secret desire without even knowing necessarily what it is. But what you're going to find is nine times out of ten, if a couple is truly committed, they're going to say the exact same thing. I got mine already. Oh, why don't we check in first with Bill and Jean? Yes. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three. I want to stab you! <laughs> Mike and Tanya? Uh -huh. <laughs> you ready? Totally ready. Hello, Tavern. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Waterproof Louisiana. <laughs> Hello, Parent-Teacher Conference. Wow, it's hard to believe I'm at this military base already. <laughs> All right, listen up. We've got a hot lead on the location of one Amin al-Zakari. So, suit up, SEALs. Yes, sir. Whatever. <laughs> What the hell is your problem, boy? I could suit up in my Kevlar, strap on my M80, be proud that I'm a Navy SEAL. But will all the accomplishments that I've done lately, but that won't change the way I feel. Now that Bin Laden's dead, I just don't know what to do. It seems there's nothing left for me to look forward to I'm a man without a goal, a rock without a roll It's like playing Little League when you've won the Super Bowl Oh, oh Lord. Lord, tell me what I Assassinate Gaddafi, capture Al Zakari, overthrow Ahmadinejad. <laughs> but nothing could compare to what we did last weekend. Oh, in old Abbottabad. <laughs> now let me lie and I just don't know what to do. It's like there's not a thing for us to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> 
like a choir without a hymn or a hat without a brim. It's like trying to score with Chloe when you are discord with Kim. Oh, no.